Well, before to go in depth with uh, Envit, I really advise you to start with a really simple scene uh, to familiarize you with uh, with the script. Let's take a look at uh, the UI of Envit first. It's uh, really simple. You have some main tab, uh, the scatter and the info one. Um, I try to keep everything simple with uh, less icon and click as possible. All is uh, things for you. I try to put the best workflow uh, with minimum click as possible. I also design uh, Envit as a floating window. Of course, you can you can dock it into Maya. For example, I can dock it here. But as you saw, the UI is more designed for a floating window, so you you will anchor some uh, some problem that will work. But uh, you need to uh, to deal a bit with. Maybe if I plug here, you can you can have something more like that. That will work. But uh, as you as you prefer. Let's start with um, our ground. So here, select a ground. OK, I select my mesh. And to create a new system, a new ground, it's this icon. So I click here, and you will have the new ground pop-up windows. Ground name, layer name. In upper case, it's better. I will call it simply ground here. Uh, and layer name, uh, you should enter this. If you do some mistake, I try to help you. Uh, if, For example, if I click here, you will have a little warning that will um, tell you what, what is wrong, uh, you should give a layer name, OK? So I can't create without a layer name. So let's call Sphere, for example. OK, let's create. Wait a few seconds for Envit to prepare for you the system. And you are. So different things. The UI updating with now my uh, Sphere layer here. You have the what we call the diagnostic Sphere, which is some simple sphere to, to, to tell, tell you where is uh, the scatter. But even if it, you don't have instance for now, it's just the, the, the empty point. And it will select for you the ground uh, locator. What is that? I will move here. It's, um, it's just uh, like a viewport ground system. So just place here. here. And last things in the viewport, you have the on the uh, Envit ground system, which is created here with all the things Envit uh, need to work. So it's really complex. I advise you one thing is to <laughs> never touch this. OK, uh, you can only uh, if you want to organize in the outliner, of course, move this guy, but never select or move. You will really break everything. OK, if you want to move, you can move this one, but don't touch or don't rename this. Don't rename anything because Envit is working by naming. So if you rename only one thing, that will break uh, all yours, all your Envit um, ground system. Now that I have my first layer, it's still empty. So I will add my sphere asset. Just click on the plus button here. Here you will have the add asset creation windows. Um, there is some setting we will uh, look more in depth on the dedicated part. Just leave everything and create. Same thing, a little preparation loading bar, and it's done. So you have your asset here. Notice your asset now is on a little uh, locator, and it's scatter now. I have my ground load, my layer, and the asset from this layer. You can now modify things. Like, for example, I can go to distribution. Here I have the amount of distribution and set a bigger value. Boom. OK, now I will create a new sphere, which is a blue one. And I will add this one to the sphere layer. Go to asset, same thing, plus button. Um, here, in fact, you may notice he keep the name of your object, but you can rename and create. Well, what's happened here? Still on my sphere layer, now I have the two assets, but the amount count of um, distribution is still the same. In fact, it keep half uh, green sphere and half blue sphere 
to have this total um, count. Okay. Um, it's what I, I said uh, before. Um, here, all of that is controlled for one layer, which is a group a set of uh, different uh, assets. Now, uh, for example, if I um, modify the scale, global scale, that will affect all the asset on this layer. Okay, so any attribute here will affect all the um, asset on the list. It's uh, something really important to, um, to have in mind. Uh, it's really useful, uh, as we said before, when you deal with grass, we will not set uh, on each grass uh, the same value. You have a, a group of grass and each are uh, affected with all the grass uh, attributes. Now, continue to uh, focus on ground system. Let's say I have another surface on which I want to scatter. If I launch on it, it will it saved on this one. Now I want to go on this one, so I will select my image, create a new ground. Uh, of course, don't name the same name of uh, a ground existing on your scene. Uh, let's call uh, sphere terrain of what you want. Um, you can name the same here. Okay. Now, on it is loaded on this ground, which is really important. One more time, use this to help you. Now let's say I would like to scatter this same asset here. Be careful to don't use this one. This one, in fact, is not uh, your origin asset. What's happen when you create uh, a bit asset, when you load one here, it's not use your original asset because uh, I don't want to break your workflow or anything like that. You organize your asset as you want. On it, uh, duplicate them and create its own. Uh, I just hide them by default. It's all, but they are still remained uh, here on the outliner. If I select this guy, in fact, you see it's part of the ground system. Okay, everything here I can hide, show. It's not your asset. Your asset is still at its place. Uh, you just have to unhide it. It's this one, okay? And this is the origin asset. So important to know, be careful to don't uh, modify that. So now I want to scatter them. So select my origin asset and load here, create it. And okay, notice now all the values are set by default because we are on a fresh new system. And uh, distribution, everything is uh, is go is back to uh, to default. So I can I can come here. I can work on this one. Of course, that will not affect the other one. What I want to show you is how to switch from one to another one. You can from the outliner. You select, for example, I want to come back to the ground system. You select the ground ground here. Here you have the name of the system you are located on and use this button to load and boom and now on it switch to this one simple than that and of course you can if you don't want to use outliner you have the locator here and you can switch to it okay let's take a look at a more complex uh, case for ground so here is my scene and i import a mountain a ground uh, just a little note to say you, uh, Envit is designed to fix a um, lake of tool in Maya uh, on scattering parts, okay? But in um, terrain and ground creation, there is a lot of uh, solution, of good solution um, out of Maya. Uh, you have Gaia, you have ZBrush displacement, you have a lot of things, and it's pretty, pretty simple to import in Maya because it just uh, mesh and texture. Okay, so it's why I will not uh, made a terrain or ground creation in Envit because I I feel it's no 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 need. Okay, uh, otherwise a scatter tool is really need in uh, in Maya. Okay, so yes, uh, create your your mountain as you want. Uh, for me, I load here um, a simple OBG file. OBG file. Um, 
the main problem when you deal with environment is uh, the scale. Of course, um, I, I don't know the right, the perfect way to do, but I think it's great to, to have a, um, a way to do uh, a workaround for that. Uh, here, first thing, so be careful about your scene. Verify you are well set on uh, preference setting you are well on centimeter, which is a default Maya uh, unit. So keep it like that. Then um, verify also your grid uh, and your size. For example, if I create a polygon, a cube, here you will have the value, in fact, in centimeter. So let's take one meter by one meter, create. Here I'm one meter. If I want to create a landscape with mountain, uh, I don't think it's a good way to be a one to one scale. Uh, because that will be too huge uh, to, and some tool uh, can incur some, uh, some problem. So find just the right value. Don't work uh, on millimeter scale and don't work on uh, too much, too huge uh, scale. Just find the right, uh, right things. Okay, so I will load my mountain. Um, I hope you, you know the from where uh, come this uh, problem. It's just a problem of near for clip from the camera. So select your perspective camera, go to attribute, and here, yeah, just change the value. Okay. Okay, so you see um, my, my I, I took uh, a tree as an example. Uh, my tree would be something like that. And on the mountain, yes, why not? Okay, so here is my mountain. As you saw, it's pretty heavy uh, in terms of polycount. Um, you can use it in Avid. That will work. The scattering will work and that will work pretty well. The problem will come with painting. Painting uh, is based on a vertex, uh, the vertex color tool from Maya. And you maybe know it's not uh, really good in terms of performance if you have too much uh, polygon. So it's why I advise you to create a proxy uh, LOD uh, version of that. So I create that you can create from your native software or you can use the radius tool from Maya. It's what I, I, I did. I use a radius tool and I have a lower version. Okay. I will just use as a as a proxy. So I will create with this one. Then uh, quickly create a little three asset. I will load here three. Perfect. Scale it a bit. I will add more. Nice. Now, simply hide this one. So the reduced one will be the one used by Unbit. But for render and anything, just use the iPoly one and that will work pretty well. Just to test, if I up the number, look, it's pretty pretty fast without any problem. I can even go more. Okay. Well, to finish, here is an example on how I uh, set this uh, scene. Okay. So as you can see, the same mountain mesh and uh, so each one is a unique mesh and I set um, a ground for each um, each one of uh, for each uh, mountain okay so pretty simple uh, and after on each one you divide with the layer the asset the grass the, the rocks uh, etc 
Here I use a template for display, we will uh, show it later. So this way you can have a lot of uh, instance with uh, no frame rate uh, problem. Here are the locator to help you to organize your asset. As you can see, it's still pretty heavy in terms of uh, poly count. So this one here is a, is a scatter uh, high number of time, but it's not a, a problem on, on rendering. I will show you. Now to finish, I will show you about asset uh, optimization and um, memory usage, and you will see it's pretty uh, decent. So here is um, the scene with uh, all the assets. You can so my uh, memory usage is uh, near from um, 17 and I will just launch a pair. Well, uh, it's rendering and as you can see, it's uh, take pretty nothing in uh, memory usage, uh, just about less than two uh, gigabytes of memory. Um, and you can increase the instance number that will not increase the memory usage because of um, the optimization, uh, which is pretty uh, robust, okay. Uh, the, the main uh, memory usage, I think it's uh, because of the AV uh, mountain geometry in Maya viewport, but uh, you can optimize, optimize that. But uh, for the rest, uh, that will work uh, pretty, pretty well. And you can go with uh, AV uh, scene without any problem.